Hi, welcome to this video presentation by Unknown India YouTube channel. Please view it on a laptop or desktop or tablet for better video quality and use a headphone, earphone or earbuds for better audio quality. You may have learnt from media reports that the Indian Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi inaugurated on 4th March of this year, that is 2024, the core loading of the prototype fast breeder reactor at Kalpakam, which is 80 kilometers from Chennai in Tamil Nadu, India. Many people both in India and abroad ask, why is this such a big deal? Because the significance and importance of this event are lost over most of them for want of proper and simple explanations. We will explain these in this video, which is based entirely on facts and scientific data in public domain. We have given all the document references in the description below. So, what is core loading in a fast breeder reactor? Before we answer that question, let us refresh our secondary school science. Nuclear fission occurs when an atom of uranium, that is U-235, is bombarded by a neutron. Thus, uranium-235 is a fissile material. The neutron splits the atom, producing two or more fission products more neutrons and a lot of energy. The neutrons travel very fast and will escape if not slowed down or moderated. If moderated, say with a medium like heavy water, the neutrons slow down and can bombard and split more uranium-235 atoms, thus producing a sustained chain reaction kept in check by the moderator. The massive energy produced in this nuclear fission can be used to heat water and produce steam that drives a turbine and then a generator to produce electricity. This is the typical thermal neutron reactor or thermal reactor in short form for producing nuclear energy in which the neutrons are slowed down or moderated to sustain a chain reaction. It has a central fuel core with a control mechanism surrounded by a moderator that is usually heavy water and a heat exchanger that converts water to steam. The spent fuel waste has to be periodically removed and disposed of. In a fast breeder reactor, the fuel core containing fissile uranium-235 is surrounded by a blanket of fertile, that is not fissile, material, that is uranium-238. A less aggressive moderator like liquid sodium is used, which allows the neutrons to travel faster, but at the same time retaining control. The fast moving neutrons liberated by fission of uranium-235 are absorbed by the uranium-238 which gets converted to fissile plutonium-239 which can be used for further fission to produce energy. Similarly, thorium TH-232 can be converted in a fast breeder reactor to uranium-233 which is the secondary fissile material. Thus, a fast breeder reactor produces both energy and more secondary fissile fuel than what it consumes. What happened on the 4th of March of 2024 is the core loading activity for the prototype fast breeder reactor at Kalpakam, consisting of the loading of reactor control sub-assemblies, followed by the blanket sub-assemblies and then the fuel sub-assemblies which will generate the power. Criticality will be achieved by this reactor in a few months when power generation will start. Once that happens, India will become the second nation only next to Russia whose commercial fast breeder reactor at Belayarsk power station is the only commercial fast breeder reactor though small test fast breeder reactors have been built by other countries including USA, France, Germany, Japan etc. That is indeed some distinction for India in mastering nuclear technology. But why does India need a fast breeder reactor? We will answer this question from several angles. We will start with the economic angle first. We need to start with the milestones of India's economic ambitions. India currently, that is for the financial year 2023-24, has an estimated gross domestic product or GDP of dollars 3.6 trillion and is ranked as the fifth largest economy of the world after USA, China, Germany and Japan. 
As per the target set by the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, India will reach the third global GDP rank in 2028, leaving Germany and Japan behind. Again, he has declared the ambition of becoming a developed country by 2047, that is, in less than 25 years from now. This means that India has to leapfrog from the present per capita GDP of $2,570 to $13,875, which is the threshold for being called a high-income country as defined by the World Bank. This is more than five times the present per capita income to be achieved in 24 years. That is, a real compounded growth of 7.2% per annum for the next 24 years without any miss in any year. What are the implications of such growth? This means that several sectors of the Indian economy, especially infrastructure, industry and services, will have to grow and expand at breakneck speed. That will require a massive boost in our power generation. It is estimated that our peak power demand will go up from the current 243 gigawatts to about 700 gigawatts by 2047. That is by 2.9 times the present figure. Install capacity from the present 427 gigawatts to over 1 terawatt or 1000 gigawatts that is by 2.3 times and power generation from the present 1750 billion units to over 4000 billion units that is again 2.3 times. This is massive growth indeed. Let us now take a look at the mix of the sources for India's present power generation of 1,750 billion units. An overwhelming 56.8% of the power is generated from fossil fuels such as coal, lignite, diesel and gas. Hydroelectric power contributes to 11.2% and other renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, tidal, wave, etc. contribute to as much as 30.4%. Only a very small portion of India's power is nuclear at 1.6% of the total. When the generation is taken in 2047 to 4000 billion units, we cannot have this same mix because India has pledged at the United Nations Climate Change Conference COP26 held in UK in end 2021 to move to net zero carbon by 2070. India has also committed to reduce the carbon emission levels of 2005 by 33 percent by the year 2030. It has then revised this to 45 percent in COP28 held in United Arab Emirates in end 2023 when the pledge on net zero carbon was also reiterated. Apart from commitments to the global community, India needs to reduce its carbon emission levels considerably to avoid climate disorders at home as well as to protect the health of its own citizens. And this means that the percentage of power generation from fossil fuels has to be drastically reduced. Also, India has to import most of its requirements of crude oil at considerable cost and spending of foreign exchange. Its supply chain has also become unreliable because of global security situation. There are also limitations on how much the generation from locally available renewable resources can be increased due to limitations of size of resources as in hydro, land use in solar, technology in tidal, wave, etc. Therefore, nuclear power generation will have to play a very major role in the future in India. Why a fast breeder reactor? Why not a normal one? Good question and we will answer it now. India has 22 fully operational nuclear power plants spread over 7 states. Another 8 plants are under construction. All of these except one at Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu are all of the thermal type using uranium-235 as fuel. Uranium U-235 as nuclear fuel in thermal reactor has a few disadvantages. 
India has very little uranium resources, so most of it has to be imported with considerable amount of foreign exchange. Only 7% of naturally occurring uranium is fissile material, the rest is all waste. Processing, storing and final disposal of nuclear waste are real pains. Thermal reactors are inefficient in producing power. One ton of fuel produces 8 gigawatt days of power, whereas a fast breeder reactor can take either plutonium 239 or thorium 232 as the fuel. Thorium can be an alternate primary fuel. More fuel is produced than consumed, either uranium 238 to plutonium 239 or thorium 232 to uranium 233, thereby drastically reducing the requirement of uranium. Energy conversion is nearly 20 times at 155 gigawatt days per ton of fuel as proved at the fast breeder test reactor at Kalpakam, which has been in operation for over 40 years now. Nuclear waste is reduced drastically, thereby lightening the burden of waste disposal. Obviously, the fast breeder reactor far outweighs the thermal reactor in terms of benefits. It will be in order to elaborate some of the points favoring the fast breeder reactor to fully comprehend its significance and importance. India has abundant thorium reserves, mostly in the sands of Kerala beaches, but also in other states like Orissa, Tamil Nadu, etc. But can we use thorium right away? We are afraid not. To understand why not, we have to look at the three stages of nuclear energy program formulated in 1954 by Dr. Homi Baba and refined later by Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. In stage 1, pressurized heavy water reactor program using uranium-235 as fuel commenced as far back as in 1956 and has so far added 22 operational plants and 7 more are under construction as we already saw. In stage 2, which is going on now, a prototype fast breeder reactor has been constructed by the public sector undertaking Bhavini with support from over 200 Indian MSMEs. Its core was loaded recently. This will initially use a combination of oxides of uranium and plutonium as fuel and non-radioactive uranium-238 as blanket for conversion to fissile plutonium-239 which will later be processed and used as fuel. Later, it is also planned to add thorium-232 also as a blanket to yield fissile uranium-233. As a precursor to this prototype fast breeder reactor, a 40 megawatt that is thermal fast breeder test reactor was designed and built in mid-70s and successfully commissioned after attaining criticality in 1985 by the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research at Kalpakam. It used a mixture of carbides of uranium and plutonium with liquid sodium as moderator. This was a brilliant innovation in fuel choice, backed by research by Indian scientists. It has been in successful operation for nearly 40 years now and has provided the scientists and engineers valuable data and insights to understand the several challenges of fast breeder reactor technology and build course corrections into the design of prototype fast breeder reactor. It has helped to prove that the fast breeder reactor is at least 20 times as efficient as a thermal reactor. In the advanced stage 3, the fuel will be uranium-233 and the blanket will be thorium-232, yielding uranium-233. Thus, you can see that each stage of India's nuclear power program feeds into the next stage to make the program completely self-sustaining in the long run with the indigenous vast thorium reserves. This will constitute a closed fuel cycle whereby the three stages feed into each other in such a way that the spent fuel generated from one stage of the cycle is reprocessed and used in the next stage of the cycle to produce power with very little nuclear waste to be disposed. A brilliant plan indeed. Is the fast breeder reactor safe or risky and dangerous? Some ill-informed critics and media 
have been raising this bogey. We will now silence them with an account of the elaborate safety measures being taken in design, construction, installation and operation of the fast breeder reactor by both the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research as well as the public sector undertaking Bhavini. Special materials have been identified and used for the core cladding, reactor vessel and other reactor components, pumps, control mechanisms as well as the shielding and structural parts to take care of the very high levels of temperature, irradiation, sodium corrosion, thermal and mechanical stresses etc. Very high design safety factors have also been used to rule out failure. All components have been subjected to intense tests on various parameters before assembly. Elaborate testing is done by simulating sodium spray fire scenarios, sodium fire followed by cable fire, sodium concrete interactions, sodium water steam reactions, and qualification of innovative sodium sensors, sodium fire extinguishers, sodium leak collection trays, etc. Testing is also done in simulated conditions of very severe accident scenarios such as vessel deformation, grit plate melt through, sodium release to reactor containment building, molten fuel coolant interaction, failure of sensors, etc. Simulated earthquake testing of reactor assembly is also done and there is a special protocol for tsunami which was followed in the 2004 Chennai tsunami avoiding any damage or loss of life. A first of kind in the world demo reprocessing plant for both the test and prototype fast breeder reactors has been built at Kalpakam, capable of handling a variety of irradiated as well as spent fuels. Based on the experience with the spent fuel of the prototype fast breeder reactor, a full-blown commercial scale reprocessing plant will be built later. State-of-the-art hot cells are used for handling irradiated as well as spent fuel safely and an advanced radiometallurgy lab is available for testing them. Bhavini gives very advanced training to potential and existing reactor operators in various simulated conditions including emergencies and accidents. Operator responses in various situations are recorded and analyzed over a long period of time before certifying an operator and giving him or her license to operate a reactor. We hope that this video has helped you in understanding the significance and importance of the fast breeder reactor at Kalpakam near Chennai, India. Thanks for watching. Please check out our other videos in the full playlist and also subscribe to our channel by clicking the respective links. Thank you.